<laughs> well, it's so good to be with you this afternoon. Does this guy have an incredible life or what? What do you think? <laughs> Richard Ranson, this is an amazing life. I'm a lucky, lucky, you're a lucky, lucky guy. Lucky man. <laughs> Richard was asking me, why is it that this conference attracts so many really successful people when you're already successful? And what I've heard is a common theme here from everyone is that it's because these are successful people, they're high achievers, in fact, you have to be an overachiever to be at this conference, but they're all hungry. We're all still really hungry to not only try to be the best, but be even better than that, but to have impact and make a difference in the world. And so I just want to take a moment to thank Pat Meyer at the World Business Forum, her staff, all the sponsors. Has this been a rocking couple of days at the conference? Should we give them a big round of applause? Well done. Well done. Mark Thompson is the CEO and co-founder of the Virgin Unite Entrepreneur Initiative. He is one of the most successful senior business communication executives and angel investors of our time. Mark Thompson has been a board member and advisor to Fortune 500 and Global 100 companies. He was a member of the board of directors and audit committee of Best Buy Enterprises. A New York Times best-selling business author, Thompson co-authored the international bestseller, Success Built to Last, the sequel to Jim Collins and Jerry Forrest's Built to Last, and co-authored with Brian Tracy, Now Build a Great Business. Mark Thompson's latest best-selling book is about how you can double your value as a leader and how you and your organization can become one of the world's most admired businesses. He is Charles Schwab's former Chief Customer Experience Officer, Chief Communications Officer, and Chief of Staff, reporting directly to the founder, Charles Chuck Schwab himself, starting in 1987. During his tenure, the company's customer assets grew tenfold to more than $800 billion in over 5 million client accounts. Leadership is more personal than ever. It has more than ever to do with each and every one of you being able to recruit people to your idea of this dream, your idea of what you want to execute here. They have to be able to be willing to take the leap of faith and take a bet on you, take a risk that they can make a difference and have impact under your leadership. 30 years of research and interviews with hundreds of successful leaders around the globe, Thompson helps transform both businesses and individuals alike to boost sales and lead change. And I really appreciate what you did for our sales organization today. I thought you did an excellent job of incorporating our priorities, our focus in our business right now into your message in a way that was very, very relevant for our organization, very inspiring, and really gave us a lot of perspective on what we are doing right now has been accomplished in other industries and other organizations, and we can do it too. So thanks very much. I can't think of many entrepreneurs who've had an impact on so many different industries at the same time. And you've been able to do this at a high performance with many different industries. Most of us here have to specialize. We end up going deep. We try to make that work for customers. How have you been able to perform so well in many industries? And, and how do you actually choose something to invest in? Most of the big brands specialize in one, in one area. And so if we can find a brilliant, brilliant people to run it, people who really care about people, uh, give them a lot of freedom to make mistakes as well as to make good things, don't second guess them all the time. Uh, people like yourself come and brainstorm with us. So thank you for that. Could you just give a round of applause to someone that you love, that you feel has made you successful? Could we do that right now? One, two, three. Let's give it a... Yeah. Nothing worthwhile gets done <laughs> alone. Could you guess how many companies, once having achieved your level, can go on in the next three to five years to continue to expand and grow their market share? Once you get to this inflection point. You know how many it is? Turns out to be... Only one in 15 companies can do it. I'm convinced that you folks here at Rite Aid, you're the one in 15. Are you with me on this? Are you one of... <laughs> do each of you believe that you are the one in 15 that's going to make this company rock? Are you going to do it? <laughs> Absolutely. And I'm glad to hear that. Because you know what? With the level of effort that you're putting in, talking to management here, how hard you're working, you deserve it. You deserve the absolute best. Before every keynote presentation, Thompson and his team will reach out to interview your customers and managers to make sure the keynote is right on target. Video excerpts from the interviews are incorporated, creating a one-of-a-kind presentation. Overall, the presentation was so entertaining and educational because of the way the video 
clip was incorporated into the presentation style. I think the audience really enjoyed it. And he really embodies the values and the culture and preaches and lives the values and the culture that we've, that we've embodied for the last 10 years. Integrity, passion, productivity, everything that, that's, that we believe has taken us to the next level. Mark, you just did a phenomenal job in front of 300 senior executives Fortune 500 companies in marketing and logistics have all told me how much you brought to the table and what they've taken away to back to their office, immediate action to grow their business. So thank you, it was wonderful. How many of you would like to see your team be able to be so effective you can manage through these next five years of change with great success? How many of you feel that conviction? It's good to see this because this is at the core of the research we've been doing at Stanford for the last 30 years. What we've been doing is looking at 17 industries that have gone through extraordinary and excruciating change. We looked at organizations, only those that had been successful for 20 years or more. We wanted measurable, demonstrable success. And the good news is that we found, when we did the global survey, that there were five principles that were necessary to manage change during turbulent periods like this in all of the industries. We're gonna talk about those five. Mark did a great job today. As usual, he was helping us through our experience and through all of his experience and really asking us the tough questions. So we really appreciate him coming today, thank you. And the difference we found was fundamentally we weren't hiring and recruiting people who absolutely passionately felt like owner operators that loved dealing with people. And what they own is not the store, what they own is the relationship with that customer. Mark really tailored the message to what we're focused on right, right now, which is customer service, and spoke about how critical it is to develop passion with your teams and to develop a drive for success and a drive for excellence in order to deliver customer service. So it was really the perfect message for our team today. Principle number two has to do with this idea of being in a constant process of personal development. Now, it sounds like a cliche to say that the road to excellence is always a journey, but one of the shocking things about being able to sit down with Steve Jobs or with Nelson Mandela was that they were never done. You know, you'd think they'd arrived, right? You'd think that they had it all wrapped up. In fact, if you didn't know who they were, in private, they talked about Failure so much, you'd think these people were losers. They were always looking for a better way. I never met an Olympic athlete who didn't think that she could run further, faster, better next time. It was always about getting better. It's like, when do we rest? And we found that that's a dangerous view in a company as well. You know, we just set goals. We met those goals. We've achieved a lot. Now you're asking us to grow again. What? Can't we just rest on our laurels? Can we not just mess with the system we've worked so hard to build? We found that that's kind of dangerous thinking, unfortunately. It's rational thinking, but it's dangerous. Because the organizations and individuals that don't continue to set the big goals lose market share within three to five years. And they're out of business within 10 to 20 years. You're able to talk about innovation being much more than just product, or what's the next I this or I that or I cloud, but being much more about how we look at things, how we do in our business, so it's spot on. I'm leaving this room today feeling more empowered than ever to take on the challenges that are going to meet me today and thereafter. So thank you, Mark. All of us here are mentors. People look at us under a magnifying glass. They're watching our behavior. They're looking for exceptions to what we say and what we do. And what we can really do best in managing change and in recruiting people to that change is to think of ourselves as mentors and fight for each other rather than against each other. The power of a photograph is absolutely disruptive to the audience because if you think about all the charts, the Gantt charts, if you think about all the metrics that they were filled with the last couple of days, first of all, having you as the last speaker was most powerful because what you did was speak with them, not to them. And the power of a photograph it has such simplicity that it crosses education, demography. It's something that everyone could relate to. And third, you chose platinum names and faces that they could relate to, like Richard Branson. So I think your style is off the chart. Hi, I'm uh, Sean Jackson with Meridian Credit Union from Ontario, Canada. Uh, I just had a great session with Mark Thompson and a group of credit union CEOs from uh, Canada shared with us uh, the, the results of a lot of his interactions and interviews with uh, some tremendous leaders and highly recommend any time or, or opportunity you get to spend with Mark. Yeah. 
uh, a wonderful coach. Thanks, Mark. More than any other factor that inspires people to do the work that you want them to do, there's one factor that trumps it all, the relationship with the boss. Let's talk about trust. An interesting guy who had challenges with trust was Richard Branson at, at Virgin. He wanted to start an airline. And this airline, Virgin Atlantic, was something that his management team and his board resisted for a very long time. My fellow directors on the record company, when I said I wanted to start an airline, you know, were, were apoplectic. And, um, and nobody expected us to succeed. And I wasn't sure, but I just felt that you know, traveling on other people's airlines was not a pleasant experience. And I just felt um, it, 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 there must be a way of doing it better. And he did find a better way. When something goes wrong, usually you're trying to figure out what's gone wrong. So there's a hesitation, or it takes some time to, to be able to react. This year is an anniversary for me. And if on my anniversary at our party, my wife asked me in public, and I love her very much, and, and she says, honey, do you love me? And my response is, <laughs> yes, absolutely. How much closer to the couch would I be that night? Now, it turns out in the research that we've done on interactions and credibility and trust, what we found at the lab is that the amount of time that you take to respond reduces your credibility proportionately. In other words, silence is not golden. Mark's presentation was absolutely amazing. His passion showed through and through. He met with all of us for our executive um, breakfast this morning and shared so many great things about himself and how we really all connect as one. Mark was absolutely fantastic and he hit a home run. Our franchisees could relate to everything that he had to say. He was amazing. Forbes magazine named Thompson one of the top 100 venture investors with the Midas touch. And he's currently an investor in companies like Facebook and Apple Computer's number one app provider for the iPhone and iPad. Mark is program chairman of the American Express Peter Drucker Leadership video series. ABC News calls Mark Thompson the Napoleon Hill of the 21st century. Tony Robbins says Thompson will inspire you to greater business results with your heart and your head. Visa International says Mark Thompson's keynote solves business problems and hits the bullseye for your organization. Sir Richard Branson says success built to last reveals a meaningful secret formula for success.